If any of you guys watching this video have dealt with cast iron fittings, Revit families, available from the producer websites, then most likely you had a lot of problems connecting your piping systems. I will try to show you how I use Revit PVC fittings and turn them into cast iron fittings. Revit families that come pre-installed with the program work much better than what I could find available for download from producer's website. I am going to open a plumbing project and here in my downloads folder I already have some cast iron fittings downloaded from the manufacturer website. You can find the links in the description below. I will select them all and load them into my project. Now I will zoom in a little bit and press CM on my keyboard which is the shortcut for place component and from the properties panel I will select the short sweep fitting. I will place it somewhere around here and then I will change the detail level to fine and the visual style to shaded. Now I will use CM shortcut again to select the 16th band and place it right here. Then the drop down menu I will select 8th band and finally a 6th band. Also cast iron fittings need clamps, so I downloaded this family. Download link will be also available in the description below. So these are the fittings I will use for the purpose of this video. Now we need to create a new pipe type, therefore I will go to systems and here under the plumbing and piping category there is a tiny arrow pointing down and right that when I click I will open the mechanical settings window. Under segments and sizes I will click create new pipe segment icon. I will check material and schedules type and for material I will look for cast iron charlotte and the reason we have this material is because I previously imported the cast iron fittings. For the name I will type cast iron NH from no hub schedule 40 and then duplicate size catalog is not very important because we will redefine all the sizes but for now I will select uh, let's say steel carbon schedule 40. Now I need to delete these sizes because are for the steel carbon so I'm going to select them and get rid of them one by one. And for the last one, I will get a warning saying that I cannot delete it because it is the last item. That's not a problem. I will close for now and I pull the dimensions for cast iron pipes from a PDF file that you can download from the link below. The PDF is from the manufacturer website. I will add a new size and from the table I can see the available sizes. So I will start with one and a half inches. And also now I can add inside diameter which is 1.5 inches and outside diameter which is 1.9 inches. I will continue with the next size which is 2 inches and I will get all the dimensions I need for each size from the table on the right. I will fast forward while I add all these other dimensions. Now when I'm done, I can delete this 24 inches size. Ok, the next step is to create a cast iron pipe segment, but we also need to create a new pipe type. So I will need to select the pipe command and go to edit type in the properties panel, click on duplicate and name it cast iron no hub. And now we need to edit the routing preferences. Here under pipe segment, I can select the cast iron schedule 40 that I just created earlier. The maximum size is 15 inches, so I will also change that. For the elbows, I will select the short sweep and if I scroll down, I will also be able to assign a clamp family for flange. Clamps are obviously not flanges. But this is how we can convince Revit to add a clamp at each other end of a fitting. 
Now since I'm done with creating a new pipe and assign my fittings that I need for now, I can start drawing a pipe and I will make a 90 degree bend. If you have problems finding the clamp in the flange routing preference, you need to make sure that when you edit this family, here under part type there is a drop down menu and in order to work it has to be defined as a flange. Now when I go back to the project I can draw another pipe with a 60 degree angle and if we take a closer look and we compare the 6 band we can now see that the dimensions of the fitting are nowhere close to what it's supposed to be and that is because our default band is a short sweep. But how can we make a fitting that has the right dimensions according to the used angle? I will select the short sweep and go to Edit Family. When I open Family Types, I will be able to select in the bottom right something called Manage Lookup Table. I will export Lookup Table in my Downloads folder so I can open it and take a look at it. Once it's open, now I can see a chart that defines all kinds of dimensions and diameters for each available size of the fitting. In the chart, I can see there are dimensions for the size of the pipe but there is nothing that shows an angle. So I will exit this fitting family and what I want to do is create a new family fitting that will adapt the right size fitting according to the right angle. In order to do that, I will use one of the default Revit families. I need to go to my C drive, program data, make sure you can see your hidden folders, then I'll go to Autodesk, scroll down and look for RVT 2020 or whatever versions you have libraries US Imperial or metric if it's the case now look for the pipe fittings PVC schedule 40 socket type DWV and finally here I have three types of bands and the one that has angle in the lookup table it's called bend once i open this family i'm going to open the family types window to access manage lookup tables and i'm going to also export it in my downloads folder using alt and tab in the same time i can quickly switch between my downloads folder so i can open it so this is a similar lookup table but it has a specially designated column for angles so I can control the dimensions of the fitting not only by diameter size but also by angle. Now I will fast forward while I'll take some snapshots from the cast iron know-how PDF provided from the manufacturer website. What I need is the dimensions of the fittings and the dimensions of the pipe. Using Alt tab to switch between windows will be very helpful in this process. I prepare my snapshots on the right side and I will compress this chart a little bit. The 90 degree angle will have the dimensions of a short sweep or as others like to call it a medium sweep. If I go to fittings detail I see that the short sweep starts with a 2 inches size. Therefore I will get rid of the first two rows because it seems that there is no size for 1.25 and 1.5 inches short sweep. So the first column is the generic number which is 2. Second column is nominal diameter. Then there is the angle and socket outside diameter that is 2.39 inches which is default for this PVC fitting. However if I look in the chart for cast iron the outside diameter barrel it is 2.35 for a 2 inch short sweep. So I'm going back to the lookup table and change it to 2.35. Next column is socket depth, which is currently in the chart set as 0.75. If I go back to the bent family from Revit libraries, I will change the scale and turn the visual styles to shaded so I can see better. And that socket depth value in the chart is the distance from here to here. Before I continue, it's a good idea to save this family with a different name. 
because I do not want to ruin by accident the default family that comes with Revit. So I will go to save as and choose my downloads folder and I don't want to name it short sweep because this will also be an 8th band, a 6th band and a 16th band. So I will call it cast iron no hub band 90 60 45 and 22.5 now i can move on without compromising the original band family that comes in built-in revit if i go back to the pdf for cast iron details i can find the depth of the socket right here it is named with spigot bead and the values are 0.25 or 0.31 so let's go and insert 0.25 in the column for socket depth coming up next is the wall thickness that i will give a value of zero if you want you can take the thickness of the barrel value from the chart and insert it here for each pipe diameter but for simplicity i will skip this and i will just make it zero it will not affect the family in any way. Next column in the lookup table is fitting outside diameter that I will give a value equal to socket outside diameter, meaning in this case 3.35. And finally, the last column is called center to socket bottom that is associated with the D from dimensions found in the short sweep chart and for the two inches it reads six and a half inches using ctrl and s on the keyboard i will save this lookup table for now and see how the two inches fitting looks after these changes and in order to see the changes take place in the fitting family i will have to go back to revit and in the properties import this lookup table again now I press apply and it does not look as expecting. Why is that? Because I did not change nominal diameter to 2. Because all the changes we just made were only for this particular fitting diameter. So this is how it looks now. Kinda looks like a cast iron short sweep but not really. And that is because this fitting has a straight line from the socket then an arch and then another straight line to the other socket but the way we just modified the lookup table it makes the fitting look like just an arch with a radius of six and a half inches so to make it look more closely to the cast iron short sweep i will have to improvise and use this socket depth as that straight sweep that extends past the arch the problem is that we do not have provided the required dimensions. But what I can do is go back and open the cast iron family that I downloaded from the manufacturer website and try to pull as close as I can this information from there. So now I have the manufacturer family open and I will go to family types and make sure I have the nominal diameter of 2. And there it is and it has a value of 3.5 inches and I will insert this value in the socket depth column on the 2 inches row. I will save and I will have to go back and import the lookup table again so I can see the changes that took effect. And it looks like we're getting closer to reality. But let me pull dimensions from here to here to check it. This dimension is obviously too small. I will duplicate this dimension and change it to 9 over 32 inches and check the bold box. Now it is clear that the distance is 10 inches. However, if I go back to the catalog, it seems that it's supposed to be only 6.5. And, and we do have 6.5 but that is just the radius not the whole dimension so i need to change it to 3 because 3.5 plus 3 equals 6.5 inches and again i will have to go save and import again the lookup table so we can see the changes taking effect
and now we have the desired dimension. I will go ahead and fast forward the process of inserting the right values for each diameter to match the manufacturer catalog size in the PDF. Now I am at 12 inches but there is no 15 and that means I need to make my own row for 15 inches. Column A and B will both be 15. Column C is the angle which is 90 degrees. E is the socket depth that we used for the center radius extension in our improvised fitting and I'll just pull this dimension from the original manufacturer cast iron short strip family and of course that needs to be for a 15 inches diameter and it is roughly 2 inches and 3 quarters. For some reason I skipped column D which is socket exterior diameter and I need to pull this dimension from the catalog and that would be about 15.83. This column will be 0, column H will be the same like column D, and finally the last column, it will be 14.75 minus column E, which is 2.75, which equals 12 inches. This will be part 1 of this video. In part 2, we're going to add a small leap at the end of each connection. And then we're going to set up the dimensions for 8th, 6th and 16th band. I'm also going to set up the way this fitting will look like in 2D and how we can pull a schedule of these fittings according to size and angle.